Howdy everybody and happy looming. Michelle here from Love to Loom and today I am going to show you my newest creation which um, my husband and I kind of went back and forth on names. He said it reminds him of old arcade games. I said it looks like ladders. He said it looked like the ladders in Donkey Kong. So we decided to compromise and I am calling this arcade ladders. Um, and the reason why, obviously, as you can see, it looks like little letters. And if you remember back in the day when I was young, I'm not going to say how old I am. Um, we used to go to the arcade all the time. And that was also around the time when um, Atari games were out really big. And if you ever played Donkey Kong, you'll remember the little ladders that they had to climb up to get to him. So that's why I dubbed this arcade ladders. Now... I do have a written pattern, obviously, for this. I do ask, if you're going to watch this video, print out this. Keep it handy so that way it's a good reference back and forth between the written and also the video. So that way you have a complete understanding of what's going on with this. Now, I did do this in the round. For this particular one, I used the 70 peg half inch Leisure Arts Oval Loom. Even though that's 70 and it's not divisible by four, which um, the, the pattern works in divisions of four, that is okay, and I will show you it's still not that big of a deal. So there was obviously 70 is not divisible by 4. I had two left over, and I just made the seam up the back here, which is really no big deal. Um, and the great thing about this pattern is obviously this is one side, but you can actually do this as a flat panel if you want as well because it's really funky looking on the opposite side. Look at that really cool looking so you can wear it either way you can wear it like this or you can wear it the way with the ladder showing out like this now this particular cow is about eight inches wide a, a little hair over eight inches and it's really nice and thick because even though you're not double knitting it almost gives you the same thickness because you are using two strands um just not together um to get this so Super comfy, and there you go. So for this project, obviously, as I mentioned, if you can print this out or bring it up on your screen and keep it handy, that way, as I explain things on here, you'll understand a little bit better. So even though I made the cowl, I'm gonna now make a hat, and I've kinda already got started on this. So for this, you're gonna need your two color of yarn my main color which you will notice here in the pattern i put right here main color contrast color so for me on this particular one i'm doing my main color was black and my contrast color is the gold ombre which is the the orange yellow gold color okay so your two colors and what you can do is if you have a pencil or something like that just make a little note over here on the side of what your main color is and what your contrast color is so that way you don't get confused the easy thing about this that i did is your even number like round two four six and eight those are all going to be done with the same and your odd one three five seven is going to be in your main color so it's real simple Rounds one, three, five, seven, you'll see using your main color. Two, four, six, and eight is your contrast. And the other thing is your odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, are your knit. So when you go in the round, you're going to knit on those. And then in your even numbers, two, four, six, and eight, those will be pearls. Super, super simple. All right. So again, what you're going to need are your two colors. For me, I have my main color as uh, Karen Simply Soft in black. And my contrast color is Karen Simply Soft Ombre in gold ombre. Okay. This totally reminds me of Halloween. We're coming up at that time of the year. So why not have some fun with it? You're going to need a tape measure because obviously you want to make sure that you're going the length that you want to. Now, again, for this cowl, I did just over eight inches. Um, if you choose to make it wider, that's totally you. No looming place. And for this hat, I'm going to make to match that. I'm going to do about an eight and a half to a nine. So I'm going to keep my tape measure handy while I'm doing that. Obviously, you need your looming hook. You need some scissors. And you need your darning needle. Okay. 
So there we go. Now, with this one that I'm working up, I'm using the 3 8 gauge um, premium small loom from KB Looms. This is the 80 peg, obviously, that is divisible by four. So um, what you could do is I actually marked mine um, in sets of two because when I did my brim, you can't really tell too much, but um, I did my brim is two and two. So two knit, two purl all the way around. And I did that for 10 rounds and I do have that in the written as well. Um, but you're also going to want to remember that you're working in multiples of four. So rather than re, um, mark my loom, I just know that one empty and one tag section is four. Okay. So that's how it works for me. So what I did here is I got started. I did my brim again, 10 rounds of K2P2 and I did one whole set of rounds one through eight. All right. So I'm going to start and show you guys. Now, as you can see, the great thing with um, color work that I think really throws a lot of people off is they get very intimidated because they're like, how do I put my second color on there without it being all wonky looking, without it being a whole bunch of knots? Some videos say to um, go in there and do a slip knot and put your second color on. I personally do not like doing that. And the reason why is you end up with these big bulky knots. And that drives me crazy. I like nice, clean edges. So for this, I'm going to flip it inside out. As you can see, no bulky knots, okay? Barely there. And again, barely there. And the reason why is because I don't do a slip knot when I bring in my, my second color on color work. What I do, even though it's already casted on here, I'm just going to kind of show you. I did a long tail cast on for this hat because I, I prefer doing that. But what I do is I take a nice section of my yarn and I make a loop with it. I don't tie it off like, um, like a slip knot or anything like that, but I make a loop and I just slip it onto the first one and I hold it like that. So you can see it slipped on there. And then if it's a stitch where I have to start with a knit, I'm just going to knit this one and I can always remove it when I'm done. So you're holding this one tight back here and you're just carrying that over and it's casted on there. And then what you could do later on, which I haven't even done yet with um, this one, it's still kind of loose and hanging out. I'm gonna take this one back off. Um, is once I get working on a little bit, I have my black one right here that I can run this as I weave in those ends and then I can tie it together. So it looks really nice, clean, neat and not messy at all. So this is the extra from my long tail cast on. I'm going to leave that because I'm going to use that to weave in and tie off onto my gold ombre. Okay. So I already have one round done and you can't really tell anything too much. You can kind of see a little bit of the work on the inside now. Okay. So that is showing you what one round on the inside looks like. And this is so super easy and I'm excited to show you all. So bear with me for one second here. So I have to work with the camera between my arms so I can give you guys the best look. So let me get that tail in there and that tail in there. So on row one, round one, you will see that we are, for round one, you're going to knit three and then yarn in, uh, working yarn in back. Now, if you've ever done any of uh, Luma Hat's um, bamboo stitch, you already know how to do a um, yarn in back. And it's super easy. It's similar to purling, but you're not taking it off and putting that new loop on there. I'm going to show you, like a lot of people will take it off, slip the yarn behind, come around. That's too much of a headache for me. I like to move fast. I like to go. So I'm going to show you a little cheat and um, it'll help you work a little bit faster. So right now we're going to work on round one. We're going to knit three. We're going to working yarn in back one all the way around using our main color, which is black for me. So whatever your main color is, work with that. Now, what I also like to do is when I'm working with two colors like this, I like to make sure that um, when I do the crossover of the colors, 
and I'll show you on, on the cowl here. When I do the crossover of the colors, I like a nice clean stitch. So as you can see here, here's where my crossover happens. And when I say crossover, now on this one here, I finished with the orange, as you can see, the orange is all the way around. Okay, and I have it where this one's gonna lay here. This one has to come in front. So it kind of makes, I call it a crossover. It's not necessarily a knot, but it leaves a nice clean stitch like this on the inside and it just looks much nicer, okay? See, now it won't be as obvious on the hat as it is here because these were two extra pegs because it wasn't in multiples of four with the 70 peg, but it'll still look nice and clean at that point. It won't look laddered or anything. So the other thing I like to do is my, my yarn that I am not working with, just drop it right into the center of your loom, okay? Woo! And then that way it's not going to be all tangled and, and get in your way and people get frustrated. Nope, not going to do that. All right. So round one, I know all my odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, are all knit. So I'm going to knit three, as the pattern says, one. And we're doing knit, true knit, unit, not e-wrap. All right. Now I'm coming to peg four. And I'm going to do the working yarn in back. What you do is you bring it down as if you're going to purl. You grab that working yarn. You bring it up, slip it over, and let it just fall behind. It's still going to be that contrast color. For me, it's that orange. Okay? So, knit three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to use that working yarn in back. So, Grab it as if you're doing a purl, drop it over your peg and just let it go and then pull it and it slides underneath and that's what makes this right here, okay? So you're gonna continue that all the way around. So I'm gonna knit three, one, two, three. And again, you don't have to pull really tight either. And then we're gonna use working yarn in back, okay? Slip it over, poop, done. You don't want to have your tension so tight that it makes it difficult for you to knit over. Remember, your hands are just there as a guide for your yarn. Don't drive yourself crazy doing super tight stitches or else you're just going to make trouble for yourself and then you're going to get frustrated and then you're going to break your loom, you're going to break your hook, or you're going to end up breaking your yarn and you don't want to do that. So knit three, working yarn in back. So you're going to continue this all the way around until you get back to your starting peg. And then it should look basically three black for me, three black, and then one in my gold color, the um, ombre, the gold ombre, the orange color. And then we will start on round two. So go ahead and pause the video, continue working, and then meet me back here after you complete round one. All right, so as you can see here, I'm going to move my yarn out of the way. So I completed round one, and you can see I have three black, one orange. Three black, one orange. So just do a quick around, and as you can see, three black, one orange. Okay, so now we're going to go to round two. And remember, easiest way to remember, two, four, six, and eight, you're always going to do pearl, and you're going to do with your contrast color, contrast color for me is the ombre gold. And you're gonna do the same thing, pearl three, working yarn in back one, okay? So what I like to do, again, just keep a nice clean edge. Here's my black that I just finished with. So I'm gonna put this on the inside, gather up all that yarn, and here's the yarn from that. And I'm gonna do that nice tight crossover. So I'm just gonna hold that one that I already had, the black, it's kind of hard to see. The black right there, and here's my new working yarn, my orange. And I'm just going to purl that one. And then you can just kind of tug on that. Make sure it's nice and secure. That's the only time you should be pulling on your yarn. Don't do super tight tension here. Use your hand as a guide. Nothing else, okay? So we're going to purl three. I just purled one, two, three. And then you're going to do the fourth one is working yarn in back. So come down as if you're going to purl, 
grab that loop, drop it over, and tug it. And it falls right down in there, okay? So you're gonna do pearl, all the ones that have your main color, black for me, whatever your main color is gonna be, pearl all those, and then the one that is your contrast color, which is the orange for me, will be a working yarn in back. That's the easiest cheat for me to remember, but however you wanna remember, that's you. So working yarn in back, up and over. And it goes super quick. Now there are other videos out there that tell you to take the loop off, drop the yarn behind. No, I don't have time for all that. I'm gonna do it this way, because A, it works, and B, it's quicker. All right, and coming up on the fourth one, working yarn in back, pick up that loop, drop it over, tug it down, good to go. All right, so remember, just keep going all the way around, pearl off all your main colors, and then working yarn in back on the one that's a contrast. Once you get all the way around, meet me back here. All right, so, as you can see, I've gone all the way around. Now, there is no differential in colors when you do your even rows, where you're gonna end up using your contrast color. So all the way around, it should be the same contrast color, in my case, the orange, all right? So, for rows three and four, you are gonna repeat one and two. So round three, you're gonna repeat one, Round four, you're gonna be repeating round two. So when you're done those, come back and meet me for round five. All right, so I have completed my first four rounds, which is uh, K3, working yarn in back for round one, round two, pearl three, working yarn in back, all the way around. And then I repeated that for round three and round four. So round five, it's very similar, but you have to pay attention. So round five, instead of the knit three, work yarn and back for one, we're going to knit one, work yarn and back one, and then knit two. Okay. So, and we're going to get started, obviously. It's odd number five. So we're going to use our main color for me. That's black. So we're going to do the crossover so I get that nice, clean stitch like I was explaining to you guys a little bit ago. All right. So here's my starting peg right here. I have that marked with a little black dry erase. And here's my orange working yarn, which was the last one I worked with. And round five, I'm going to knit. So all of my odd, I knit. So I you knit. You could true knit. You can you knit like I do, but do not e-wrap. Please, if you e-wrap, it's not going to look the same, and it's it's going to be really loose and really messy, and it's not going to have that really nice, clean edge or, or look to it. So please, um, in the pattern, I even put uh, true or unit only, no e-wrap. No! Let's break out of that e-wrap. We could do so much more than just e-wrap when it comes to loom. So I'm going to... Um, knit my first one and then I'm going to work my yarn behind and then I'm going to do two more. One, two, and then my next section, one. So what I do is I count three when I'm doing this like this, working yarn behind, okay? And then one, two, and then one more. So it's three. So it ends up being your second, your second peg out of four. All right, so as you can see here, so here's my starting peg. This is one, two, three, four. Whereas before, we were working the yarn behind on peg four. So now we're working the yarn behind on peg two, all the way around. All right, so one, two, one more. Take two is working yarn behind. So go ahead and do that all the way around. Pause the video and then meet me back here when you're back at your starting peg. All right. So round five, which was knit one, work yarn, uh, work, bleh, work yarn in back one, and then knit two is complete. And as you can see, all the way around, there's my uh, yarn in back, knit, 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 yarn in back, knit, 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 all the way around. Okay, so you should have three in your main color, one in your contrast, which was your working yarn in back. Okay, so now we're going to swap, tuck this one on the inside, 
put this one out here. And for row six, obviously we know even number is purl. So row six, we're gonna purl one, work yarn in back one, purl two in your contrast color. Obviously my contrast color is my ombre gold. And we left off with the black. Here's my starting peg right here with the black on it. And I'm just gonna tug that and I'm gonna start purling. So all the ones that are black, that's gonna get a purl. And the ones that are still orange or my gold ombre is my work yarn in back. Just carry it over, okay? So purl, purl, purl. One, two, and then start the next multiple for one. And then I'm coming up on my working yarn and back in again, just like you're purling, you're gonna scoop down, you're gonna grab that working yarn and you're just gonna place it back up over and tug it and it falls right behind. All right, so purl. Anything with your main color, just do a purl. And this is where it's easy enough to remember what you're supposed to do um, because you'll see that your contrast color is, or your main color is there. And then your contrast color is gonna be where you work that yarn in back. All right, so continue that all the way around. And when you get to your starter peg, meet me back here. All right, so I just completed round six, which was purl one, working yarn in back one, purl two. And as you can see, let me move my yarn all the way around. It should be your contrast color. So for me, it is the orange that makes it really difficult to see on here because I just now realized that I'm using an orange loom. But it should all be your contrast color. And this is with two, two sets almost done. I still have round seven and eight to do. But you can see it's starting to come through. And it's looking really funky. I'm loving it. And so for seven and eight, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to repeat for seven. You're going to repeat round five, which is knit one, yarn and back one, knit two. And then for round eight, you're going to repeat six, which is purl one, yarn and back, purl two. And then you just continue to repeat rows one through eight. Um, if you're going to do a cowl, like I said, for mine here, I did... Um, a little over eight inches and uh, you can do whatever length you want and um, for the hat if you just want a regular fitted hat you're gonna do eight and a half to nine inches if you want to do a slouchy hat you can do anywhere from nine to twelve and I even put it on here um, if you do the cowl I recommend the super stretchy bind off Luma hat has a really great video for that as well as if you're gonna do the hat Use the crown decrease. It gives it a nice, smooth um, look to the crown so it's not all puckered looking. And she has a video for that, both of which you can find on Denise's YouTube, and she will walk you through that. So, of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Um, feel free to message me on Facebook. You're welcome to join our group. You're welcome to um, send me an email. All the information is in the information below, as well as here in the um, printed instructions, the written instructions, you can find my Love to Loom group on Facebook. And if you're not a member, feel free to join. We have lots of great activities going on with monthly challenges and everything else. So we make it a lot of fun. All right, gang, thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see everybody's designs. I know that we have some really creative people out there color-wise. I can't wait to see what everybody does. All right, so happy looming, everybody. Love you bunches. Have a great one. Bye.